Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillah wassalatu wassalamu ala sayyidina Muhammad. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh and good morning. To the honorable members of the House of Representatives of Japan who are with us today. Uh, <coughs> Dr. Akihiko Tanaka, President of uh, CHAICA. Uh, Professor uh, Kamaru Zaman Iskandar of the uh, University of Saints Malaysia. Mr. Kazumi Mat uh, Mat Matsui, Mayor of uh, Hiroshima City. And of course, uh, Honorable Secretary uh, Teresa Takentus Dilis, the Presidential Advisor of the Office of the President. Uh, distinguished partners of the Japan International Cooperation Agency and the co-organizers, the Research and Education for Peace, uh, University of Saints Malaysia, members of uh, international community partners in peace and development, my Bangsamoro brothers and sisters, warm greetings to all. I take pride in joining, in joining you today on the Seminar for the Consolidation of Peace for Mindanao 6, or COP 6. I am humbled to stand with you on this hallowed ground where hundreds of thousands of people were killed by a single bomb, the atomic bomb, that was dropped in this city in 1945. And I humbly ask that we pause for a moment of silence and beseech the mercy and blessings of God upon the souls of those innocent men and women and children, and that guidance be bestowed upon those who wield the power to control the destiny of men and nations so that never and never again shall it be that the power of science be used to destroy mankind rather than to enhance mankind's progress. The theme of COP6, which is post-agreement implementation, post-agreement implementation building capacities for peace of the Bangsamoro stakeholders, aptly captures, in a sense, the one very important task that needs to be undertaken post-signing of the comprehensive agreement on the Bangsamoro, which is the implementation of the agreement. We may craft the most beautiful agreement in the world and provide an elaborate infrastructure for sustaining the peace, sustaining the peace process. But if such agreement never gets implemented, then it amounts to nothing. Agreements by themselves produce no longer-term impact on conflicts. In fact, the experience in the world is that failure to implement an agreement almost always results in relapse to violence. It is only the persistent and honest implementation of parties to an agreement that peace development and the practical 
benefit to the people are ensured. In my speech at the signing of the Comprehensive Agreement on the Bangsamoro in Malacanang Palace on March 27, 2004, I emphasized that the struggle did not end with the mere signing of such an instrumental pact between the GPH and the MILF. Rather, the struggle shall continue by ensuring that both parties comply with the terms of the agreement while trust is built at the outset of the bar uh, bargaining process. We cannot discount the possibility of that trust being broken after all, after all has been said and done, despite the shaking of hands and the exchanges of pulpy promises. In all honesty, it is when those promises are actually kept that the parties anticipate that real and meaningful consequences will follow. I remember how His Excellency President Aquino, in his speech during the same occasion, highlighted the impact of the comprehensive agreement on the Bangsamoro to the nation as, we, as a whole. His statement reinforced the fact that the settlement of the Bangsamoro question is not the concern only of those living in the Bangsamoro region, but of the, of the entire Philippines, uh, but of those living in the entire Philippines. As such, the post-agreement implementation phase must endeavor to reflect and support an enduring relationship between the central government and the Bangsamoro government based on mutual respect and recognition and a profound commitment to honor the signed agreements of the parties. But as we implement agreements, we will need to build a strong foundation for the institution that will be created in the Bangsamoro. While we believe that the structure of this institution must be sound, we equally believe that people who would run this institution must be competent. Let me be candid here in saying that the MILF, as a revolutionary organization, realizes that the fact that as we move forward, the transition of go to governance and the development, certain capacities needs to be built. We may even boldly say that capacity building given time constraint may not even be sufficient for us to surmount the many challenges we would face in leading the Bangsamoro government. And hence, capacity mobilization may be a better option so that we can respond more timely and appropriately to the expectations of our people have been deprived of proper governance for a long time. We are a revealed organization, and many of our skill sets that have proven effective in the days of combat may no longer be the ones that will be needed in the new phase of our struggle. We will need to learn new skills challenge our ability to adapt to the changing needs of the time and welcome in our ranks those who are equipped with the needed skills and are committed to the cause of the Bangsamoro. We must struggle to raise above partisanship and reject the MILF agenda 
so that it may become the Bangsamoro agenda. We must continue to see the greater things beyond ourselves, so that the MILF vision becomes a Bangsamoro vision. We must embrace the future so that we may honor our past. We must realize that as a result of the imposed war on the Bangsamoro, our communities have been shattered, the economy left in ruins, development is stalled, and resources wasted. We may all be concerned and too eager to roll our sleeves and hit the ground start quickly on development works. But a word of caution for us all, our resources may not be unlimited. Even with the outpouring of generosity from our development partners of the new found generosity of the central government, development must also be so designed that the benefits and the beneficiaries are clear. The strategies and methodologies reasonable, the implementation empowering and reflection of our assertion to freely determine on our own the development goals and the future of our people. After all, development is but in this context that the Bangsamoro Development Plan has been conceptualized. At the core of the Bangsamoro Development Plan is a development framework anchored on sustainable human development, peace building, and the core values that we feel are reflective of the aspirations of our people. Let me be clear that the Bangsamoro people will take the lead in our development for as the Quran has aptly reminded us, Allah does not change the condition of a people unless they themselves change. We would expect all our partners, government and the donor community to honor us with a space that would allow us to shape our development. The great people of Hiroshima, in rebuilding the city five decades ago, this city lay in ruin, first among the heavily destroyed city of Japan and its people faced with the bleak future as a result of the bomb and the long-term effect of the radiation. Today, as we move around the city, we hardly see any trace of the destruction as its people move in unison to start immediately the work of rebuilding this city, of rebuilding their future, and of showing that indomitable spirit of their, their struggle. I cannot but be amazed by the, humble, uh, by the humble and humbled by such a great result. And I pray that God forever keep its people safe. May peace reign in our homeland. May peace forever reign in Hiroshima. May peace reign in the world and may science be forever consecrated to the service of man and of peace and never again be an instrumental of destruction and death. Thank you for your kind attention and may we'll have a fruitful and productive three-day session here in Japan. Once again, good morning and wassalamu alaikum.